Getting kicked off of American Idol was tough. I thought that my dream was dashed and that I was never gonna be able to become a musician. I felt terrible. It literally felt like a punch in the stomach, in the gut, and I felt that visceral feeling that I was shattered, essentially. What I learned very quickly is, one, it made me very angry. So as you go through any kind of grief process, anger being one of them, it allowed me to have this catalyst to be like, you know what, no matter what, I'm gonna get my dream out there and start my band. But more importantly, I learned very quickly to pivot and have that shift that I never wanted to win reality TV. I just wanted to be a musician and never let anybody control your destiny, create your own opportunity. As a musician, as a creative person, you have to pursue your dreams even if other people don't see your vision. There's always going to be a dead end, a delay, a disappointment. Those are just the building blocks of what makes people successful. And what I learned is that you have to be self-assured and self-confident and self-affirming. You can't wait for outside forces to tell you that you're good or that you should continue. You have to tell yourself that. Getting kids off American Idol was actually a blessing in disguise, where I was able to ask myself, who am I as an artist, and start to develop my own blend based on my upbringing and personal experience from gospel and my roots to other styles of music like funk and soul and R&B, and really start to learn about artists that I admired, like James Brown, but then seeing how they influenced people like Prince and Michael Jackson, who I grew up on in the 80s and beyond. Confident is a really funny story. I thought it was actually gonna become the most cheesy song ever. I had no idea that it was gonna win John Lennon's songwriting contest or almost have a million streams on Spotify, but it resonated with so many people because people struggle with self-love all the time. By talking about becoming confident, it talked about an idea of positivity that people could really gravitate towards. If you want to have a music career at this day and age, if you're not, you know, a household name, you got to do more than one thing. And even within music, you got to do more than one thing. Like within music, I started as a singer and a keyboardist and then branched out into producing and songwriting and having a publishing company and licensing music and having a record label. Like it's like you just kind of, through necessity, expand your brand and, and grow. This was my pandemic project. I knew that once music shut down in 2020, March of 2020, I had nothing to do. Side hustle and flow was a bucket list item for me and to condense my life and ideas into 10 principles that hopefully will help the every man, the every woman, the average Joe, the average Jane become a little bit better in life. As we lead through the book, the 10 principles lead you through setting goals, having work-life balance, finding mentors. We talk about productivity, we talk about time management, we talk about work-life balance, but I would say out of all of the principles, when we talk about goals, being golden and setting them, 
Having smart goals, things that are specific, that are measurable, that are time bound, all of those things are super important. So I think you need to have the dream, create the goals and the action steps around that, measure all of that, and then from there start, and make sure also to finish, because if you only start, it's only half done, half begun, finishing is what actually gets your product or your service or your idea out into the world where they can actually use it. What's going on? This is Josh Gates in Expedition Headquarters. Oh, next week, Adventure Wednesday returns. Expedition Unknown is back. Expedition X is back. Josh Gates Tonight is back. What else? Oh yeah, the band is back. My hopes and aspirations is really to encourage people to be able to get out there and live their dreams, whether on a small scale or a large scale. And I want them to see it from someone like me, who's the everyman, who didn't really have anything amazing. I didn't come from money. I didn't come from prestige or anything like that. And I was able to carve out my own niche and my own version of success that I created specifically for myself. And I think everybody has that ability to be able to do that. Here we go. Yeah, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Are you ready, 10X? Now I'm gonna get some background singing going. All right, here we go. Say, you're gonna let me down, gonna let, you're gonna let me down, you're gonna let me down, you're gonna let me down. In the back, yeah, you're gonna let me down, you're gonna let me down, you're gonna let me down. And that life never becomes down, easier, down, down, you can down. only become better. Attack it. Don't let life happen to you. You need to happen to life. You're gonna let me down. Take it up. You're gonna let me down. You're gonna let me down. You're gonna let me down. Y'all did good, y'all. Hey, if you're gonna let me down, let me down easy. Fat Health and the Flow is my life journey showing you all the mistakes that I made on the road to success. And I think if you remember one thing from this book, is that having a dream that you put actionable goals behind and measure will allow you to eventually not only start, but finish the task at hand. Okay, so you see some great Stevie Wonder. It's probably one of his best recordings. Songs in the Key of Life. I think everybody's tried the pattern after this. I just saw a thing about Superstition, how he played all the instruments except the horns on it. And he was only 22 at the time, and that was his 15th record already. So Stevie, a huge influence on me, for sure. But yeah, you got Aretha. I mean, her greatest hits here has so many hits. Obviously, this has some of her blues stuff early on, uh, before she started doing her Atlantic records. But respect, Chain of Fools. Uh, you make me feel like a natural woman by Carol King. Amazing stuff. I love some Marvin Gaye. Obviously, what's going on, this was super, super influential on Motown. It was one of the first artists that actually broke away from Motown's corporation to be able to actually write and produce their own songs. And this actually became one of Motown's biggest selling albums. We are here right now at Dudley's Record Shop in Torrance, California. Dudley comes from a long, long tradition in radio and loves music and has an amazing shop. It has some great vinyl for people at all different price points. But it's very, very interesting to be able to see the resurgence of vinyl over the last couple of years and to be able to support small business in Southern California and beyond. So you should definitely go check it out if you're local to SoCal, wherever in town, Dudley's in Torrance. Tell them Cliff Beach sent you.